Hey everyone. I wanted to make a video and finish up the conversation we've been having regarding morality. You know, why bother even talking about what is right and what is wrong, and asking questions like, do good and evil actually exist, or are they just ideas in our mind? It really boils down to this, and this is not going to be an argumentative video. I'm not going to attempt to persuade you of anything. Rather, I'm going to appeal to those of you out there who are sensitive to moral absolutes. Those of you who know that you know that you know that certain things are wrong. That it's wrong to murder, for example. These laws are meant to point us to the lawgiver, God. And the Bible teaches that this law is meant to point out our wrongdoings. So we look at God's laws such as don't lie, don't murder, don't commit adultery. And what this is meant to do is create in us an awareness of our own failings, morally speaking, as well as the cause of our separation from God. The Bible says that our deeds of wickedness doing evil things has alienated us from God and made us hostile to God. We have incurred his wrath. We are deserving of his judgment and his justice for breaking his laws. And the consequence for breaking his laws, much like if you break the law on earth, you go to jail. If you break God's laws, he's prepared a place for lawbreakers called hell. God does not desire anyone to go to hell. And so he's also provided a way of redemption and forgiveness through Jesus Christ. So what I'm going to tell you in this video is what the Bible teaches concerning the forgiveness that God offers to humanity and how you can be forgiven of your sins. Now the Bible says that we're not forgiven by any works. There's nothing we can do to earn forgiveness. It is a free gift of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever should believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. That is the gospel message. It is an act of God expressing his desire to forgive you, to, to love you, and to share eternity with you as a free gift. You, you didn't earn it, in fact, we don't deserve it. And so to appropriate this for us, to us, we have to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. But let's back up for a minute. The Bible says all, that includes you and me and everyone, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all done these things that we know are wrong. The first commandment is to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And I haven't done that, and I don't know anyone who has. Uh, and the proof of that is we've broken his commandments. Another commandment, do not use the name of God in vain. How often do we hear people say, oh my G-O-D, or Jesus Christ, without reverence, as a curse word they use his name? This is blasphemy, and the Bible says God will hold no one blameless who uses his name in vain. Another commandment, Jesus said, you've heard it said of old, thou shalt not commit adultery, but now I say to you that if you even look at someone to lust after them, you've committed adultery in your heart. Pornography is, uh, is a big issue in today's culture. Playing it from a different angle as it slammed into the... Another one, Jesus said, you've heard it said of old, thou shalt not murder. Well, I have never murdered anyone, but Jesus said this, if you are even angry with someone unjustly, if you call someone an idiot and feel that they're somehow lesser of a human being than you, you are guilty of murder in your heart. You see, God's not just looking at what we do outwardly, he's also looking at the inward parts, what's going on in our heart and our mind. And if we're impure in our thoughts, we have alienated ourselves from God because God is holy and righteous and pure and he cannot have fellowship with evil. His nature is incompatible with these dark and evil things. And so through our sin, through our disobedience, there has been a separation between us and God. And to bring us back into fellowship with God, that's where Jesus Christ comes in. Jesus, who is God, became a man and dwelt among us and lived a perfect, sinless life that we all failed to live to restore a relationship between man and God. And then he offered himself up as a sacrifice for our sins. He died on our behalf as our substitute to take the punishment and the wrath that humanity deserved for our sins upon himself as a man, life for life. Then he rose from the dead and ascended back to heaven from where he came. Now, this may sound foreign to you, the idea that 
someone dying for your sins or how, how does it make sense that you know my sins could be imputed to him in Israel which is where Jesus was from Jesus was a Jewish man his Hebrew name was Yeshua and Christ is not his last name as some may believe Christ is actually the Greek word for Mashiach Messiah which is the Hebrew word for the anointed of God and this anointed one was prophesied in the Jewish scriptures to come into the world to save the world I recommend looking up Isaiah 53 what he did by becoming a man and dying for us was fulfilled an Old Testament expectation of what God was pointing the Jews towards in their history you can go back as far as Abraham and Isaac do you remember the story where Abraham was told to sacrifice his son he was to sacrifice his son on the same spot that Jesus would later be crucified God was showing how a father would one day sacrifice his son Abraham is called the father of faith what he did what he was a symbol of would be the very purpose in the uh, the direction of the entire Jewish Christian faith which would ultimately result in the sacrifice the father sending his son to die for the sins of the world so through Jesus Christ and only through Jesus Christ can be we be granted forgiveness because he's the only one who died for our sins so what we need to do the Bible says is confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that he died for our sins and is risen from the dead through repenting from unbelief and turning away from our sins and putting our trust in Jesus Christ God's wrath for our sins has already been satisfied by the shed blood of his son and now through faith in Jesus Christ we can actually be born again come back into a relationship with God and he will send us the Holy Spirit to indwell us and create in us a new creature the Bible says those who are in Christ are new new creations of God we are adopted into his family and that relationship which we lost through our sin is mended we are once again back into relationship with God which is the very purpose of our creation of our existence is to know God and to love him and be with him forever so this video is to encourage you guys to put your faith in Jesus Christ and if you'd like to receive him as your Lord and Savior it's not about what you say God's looking at your heart but if you'd like to pray this prayer with me just say this dear Lord Jesus I'm sorry for sinning against you. Uh, I've done wrong, and I believe that you died for my sins. And I'd like you to forgive me and save me on account of what you've done, on account of your shed blood. So, Lord, I put my trust in you. Forgive me and save me as you promised, and send me the Holy Spirit to indwell in me and make me a new creature, a child of God. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Some people will say this is foolishness. I can't believe this. We live in an age of science and reason. The Bible says that God uses the foolish things of the world to confound the wise and that the cross of Christ is foolishness to them that are perishing. What God has done is he's offered a way that even the smartest man to the lowest mere child can appreciate what God has done for us and approach him. You don't have to be a genius to approach God and there will be many geniuses in hell who rejected God on the basis of their sophistication of their modern wisdom and there will be some primitive people people who lived in a swamp somewhere who received the gospel of Christ with an open and honest heart who will spend forever in the glory of God's kingdom God doesn't think we're all that clever God already knows everything he doesn't honor us for our strength of our might of our wisdom what he does respect, what he does honor, is our faith in his word, that we trust his integrity, that we believe in his son. So I encourage you, put your trust in Jesus Christ. Be sensitive to moral absolutes. Understand there is such a thing as good and evil, and that the evils that we've all participated in and done have separated us from God, and that God is holy and righteous and good and deserving of our trust, our worship, and our adoration. Put your trust in Jesus Christ. If you have any questions, feel free to message me. Uh, click on my username, send me a message. I'd be happy to talk to you about if you have questions or something like that. I'd also like to give you some resources. If you've put your trust in Christ, if you're a new believer, even if you're an old believer, I've got some resources for you to help you grow in your knowledge and your faith in Jesus Christ. Check out yodelingfrog.com. They have an amazing set of sermons by some of the best preachers. Uh, so I recommend 
checking that out. There's also my website, thewaythetruth.com, links to some good creation seminars as well as gotquestions.org, another helpful resource for answering some difficult questions. That's it for now. May God bless you, and I look forward to making another video and seeing you guys again sometime. God bless.